Little Grey Rabbit and her friends and neighbours, Squirrel and Hare and Little Fuzzy Peg the Hedgehog and all the others, have been great favourites with children for more than 40 years now, ever since Alison Utley began to write the stories down and publish them. In all that time, of course, the animals have had many adventures, and now you're going to hear four of them, beginning with a winter story called Squirrel Goes Skating. <laughs> Everything was frozen. Even the brook which ran past Little Grey Rabbit's house on the edge of the wood was thick with ice. Each blade of grass had a white fringe, and the black, leafless trees were patterned with shining crystals. On every window of the house were Jack Frost's pictures, trees and ferns and flowers in silver. Little Grey Rabbit stood looking at them with delight, wishing they'd always be there, in summer as well as winter. Grey Rabbit, Grey Rabbit, called Hare as he came downstairs in his brown dressing gown. Put some more wood in the fire. It's bitter cold today. <sighs> he shivered as a draught blew under the door and ran round his feet. Grey Rabbit left the window and put a log on the fire. She pulled the table closer and drew up the chairs. Grey Rabbit, Grey Rabbit, called Squirrel, coming downstairs with a shawl over her shoulders. Pile up the fire and keep out the cold. You've had the door open this frosty morning and let the north wind in. Drive it out. At last they sat down to breakfast with hot tea and thick buttered toast and carrot sausages. Moco, called a voice, and Hedgehog knocked at the door. It's for us today, said he as he turned a solid lump of milk out of his can. Come in and warm yourself, do, Hedgehog, said Grey Rabbit hospitably. He stamped his feet at the door, rubbed them on the mat, and tiptoed over to the fire. Squirrel chopped off some of the milk and put it in the tea, and Grey Rabbit gave a cup to the frozen Hedgehog. As he sipped from his saucer, glowing and puffing at the steam, he talked. They're skating over Tom Tiddler's way, said he, and I've heard tell that everyone is going. Mouldy Watt was trying on his skates as I came past his back door, and I met a couple of brown rabbits with their toboggan. Hare put down his knife and fork. Let's go too, said he. Hurry up, everybody, and hurrah for skating. He gobbled up his breakfast as fast as he could. Well, I must be getting on, said Hedgehog, wiping his mouth with his spotted red handkerchief. Thank ye kindly for the tea. He tiptoed out again, leaving a little stream on the floor. Grey Rabbit wiped it away, and Hare jumped up from the table. Have you ever seen me skate? he asked. I'm a very good skater. It's in me to skate. I'm a born skater just as I am a born adventurer. Do you ever hear how I skated round Lily Pond backwards and passed all the other skaters forwards? I'll tell you about it. Oh, not now, said Grey Rabbit gently. We must get our skates cleaned and the house tidied and make the beds, pack the lunch and lock the door. And brush our tails and put on our best clothes added Squirrel. All the world will be there. <laughs> Hare went out to clean the skates. Squirrel disappeared upstairs, and Little Grey Rabbit did everything else as quickly as she could. She washed the dishes and swept the floor. She made up the fire and chopped the sticks for the next day. She dusted the kitchen and made her bed. She cut the sandwiches 
and packed them in the basket. When she stood ready to go, neat as ever in her grey dress with its clean collar and cuffs and a little muffler round her neck, she called Hare and Squirrel. Hare? Are you ready, Hare? Hare came running in with a basket full of icicles. I've been collecting these to take for drinks, said he excitedly. And just suck one like this. And he held one in his mouth. And it makes a nice watery drink. Oh, that's splendid, said Grey Rabbit. But you haven't changed your dressing gown. Are you going to skate in it? And where are the skates? Oh, Jemima, exclaimed Hare. I forgot the skates and my dressing gown. And he hurried off to get ready. Squirrel? Squirrel, are you ready? We're going, called Grey Rabbit at the foot of the stairs. Coming in a moment, said Squirrel, and Grey Rabbit took a last look round. The table was laid ready for their return when they would be tired, hungry and happy. There was a herb pie, an apple tart, some jam puffs and cobnut cutlets. The rabbit smiled the contented smile of the good housekeeper. I'll put out a bottle of primrose wine for the festival, said she, trotting to the larder. <coughs> Called Squirrel in a muffled voice. Ray Rabbit and Hare both hurried to Squirrel's room. A strange sight met their eyes. A green dress was jumping round and round the room, with two little paws waving wildly in the air. A green beribboned tail stuck half out of one of the sleeves, and Squirrel was so helplessly entangled that her head couldn't find a way out at all. Hare and Grey Rabbit sank down on the bed, helpless with laughter, as Squirrel turned like a spinning top. When at last they straightened her out, they found she decked herself with little green bows on her ear tufts, and hung a locket round her neck. Oh, Squirrel, you cannot go like that said Grey Rabbit. Like a mama at a fair, <laughs> added Hare rudely. So Squirrel untied her ear ribbons, but she insisted on keeping the ribbon on her tail, and the locket round her neck, and the bows on her dress. Off they went at last, Grey Rabbit carrying the basket of food, Hare swinging the basket of icicles in one paw, and Squirrel following daintily with the skates dangling on her arm. They locked the door and put the key on the window sill. Over it, they sprinkled leaves and grass, with a few icicles to give a natural touch. Nobody would guess that was a key, said Hare, and the others agreed. The world gleamed like a sparkling diamond, and the air was fresh and sweet as spring water. The three animals ran down the lane and across the fields towards Tom Tiddler's way. Little hurrying footsteps came along a side path, and a party of brown rabbits each with a pair of skates hanging on his back, joined them. Fine day, Squirrel. Fine day, Grey Rabbit. Fine day, Hare, said they. Going skating? No, we're going flying, snapped Squirrel. <laughs> By the time they reached the pond, already many animals were on the ice, and the air was filled with merry cries, with squeaks and laughter. The newcomers sat down on the bank and put on their skates. Grey Rabbit placed her basket of food in the care of Mrs. Hedgehog, who sat on a log of wood watching her son, Fuzzy Peg. Soon they were laughing and shouting with the others as they skimmed over the ice. Hare tried to do the outside edge and got mixed up with the skates of a white duck. He fell down with a thump and bruised his forehead. Woo! Grey Rabbit! Grey Rabbit! he called. Grey Rabbit! I've bumped myself! And Grey Rabbit ran up and rubbed him with her paw. She dusted the powdered snow off his gay coat and helped him to his unsteady feet. Mouldy Warp was there, skating as well as he did everything else. Slow and sure, round and round, picking up the fallen, avoiding Hare's wild dashes, and giving a kindly word here and there. I'm hungry, called Hare. Let's have lunch. 
So they returned to Mrs. Hedgehog, who still sat with her eyes on young Fuzzy Pig and no one else. Grey Rabbit unpacked the basket and Squirrel invited Water Rat, Moldy Walk, Mrs. Hedgehog and her son to join them. There was enough for all. Hare's icicles were very thin by now, but he handed round the basket and each sucked a sweet, cold icicle. They all returned to the frozen pond and skated until the red sun set behind the far hills and the air took on a new, fresh coldness. The sky was violet and the dark shadows spread across the fields as the animals removed their skates and set off home. It has been a jolly day, said Grey Rabbit to Water Rat and Moldy Warp. Goodbye. Perhaps we will come again tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Resounded round the pond. Good night. <laughs> When they returned home, the key was on the windowsill, under the pile of grass. But there were footprints in the garden. Someone has been here whilst we've been skating, said Squirrel, looking anxiously up and down. It isn't the milkman or the postman. Ooh. They all hurried inside the little house and stared in dismay at the sight. On the table lay the remains of a feast for three. Only bones and crusts and an empty bottle of primrose wine. Oh, oh, cried Grey Rabbit. I left such a feast and now look at the dirty tablecloth and the broken dishes and the spilt wine. It's as bad as the weasel's house. Oh, who's been here since we've been gone? They said all together, running to the larder. Not a scrap of food remained. All the eggs, the nuts, the onions, the tea and the flour had gone. And over the floor were footprints. Ugly footprints. They opened the door at the bottom of the flight of stairs and ran softly up to the bedrooms, each with a little candlestick and a tiny candle. There's no one in my attic, whispered Grey Rabbit, as she peered in her room, which was neat and tidy as she had left it. And there's no one in my room, said Hare, more boldly, picking up the brown dressing gown he'd flung on the floor when he went out in the morning. <laughs> squeaked the squirrel. Somebody's sleeping in my bed. <laughs> and she nearly dropped her candle in her fright. They peered through the open door, but all they could see was a long, thin tail hanging down on the floor and long black whiskers sticking out of the sheet. Who is it? whispered Squirrel in a trembling voice. It's a rat's tail said Hare. They're rats' whiskers, said Grey Rabbit below her breath. Then it must be Rat himself, sobbed the poor squirrel. They tiptoed up and looked at the lump under the sheets and listened to the snores which came from the comfortable rat. Then they tiptoed downstairs. What shall we do? they asked each other as they stood in the untidy kitchen. I'm very good at catching foxes, said Hare boldly, but I don't remember how to catch a rat. I once caught a weasel, said Grey Rabbit shivering. 
but I couldn't catch a rat. We don't want to catch him, said Squiddle. He's caught already. We want him to go out of my bed. Let's shoo him out. But he ought to be punished, objected Grey Rabbit. We ought to make him remember his wickedness. When I won't remember anything, I tie a knot in my handkerchief, said Hare. Then Squirrel spoke these astonishing words. I can tie knots, said she. I can tie ribbons and bows. I will tie a knot in Rat's tail, and it will never, never, never come undone. Then he will never, never, never forget his wickedness. Squirrel crept upstairs again, and Hare and Grey Rabbit followed with a candle to light her in her task. She picked up the long tail, and tied, and twisted it, and turned it, and doubled it, and looped it, and twined it, till it made one great knot which nobody could ever unfasten. And the rat never awoke for he had eaten so much and drunk so much from the little grey rabbit's larder. They shut the door and ran downstairs with beating hearts. Now we must frighten him away, said grey rabbit, for we don't want him to stay here always. Hare took the tongs and poker, grey rabbit took two saucepan lids, and squirrel took the bundle of skates. They hammered and banged against the bedroom door, and made such a clang and clatter, such a rattle and racket, such a jingle and jangle, that the rat awoke. He sprang out of bed, bewildered, opened the window, and jumped out onto the flower bed below. Whatever's that a bumping and a clumping behind me? said he to himself, and he turned round to find his tail in a knot. He ran down the paths with the knot reminding him of his wickedness all the way, and he didn't like it at all. At last he sat down and tried to undo the knot. But just then the wise owl came sailing along the sky over the meadows and woods. He spied Rat down below, twisting and turning as he tried to unfasten his tail. Hello, Rat, said he and he flew down to look at the unfortunate animal. Hello, been in mischief. <laughs> he chuckled in a goblin way which made Rat shiver, and then soundlessly rose from the bough and flew away. house, Grey Rabbit put clean sheets on Squirrel's bed, and Squirrel swept the floor, and Hare made a fire in the kitchen to cheer everybody up, as there was no food. Suddenly there came a knock at the door. Thump, thump, thump. The three animals looked at one another. Is Rat come again? they asked anxiously. Thump, thump, thump. Grey Rabbit, open the door! cried a voice. That's Mole, said Grey Rabbit happily, and she flung wide the door. Moldy Warp, we are so glad to see you, she cried as Mole staggered in with a big hamper, followed by Water Rat with another. I thought we would end the skating day with a feast, said Mole, so I came along with a few provisions. They both opened the baskets and took out a dozen eggs, some buttered tea cakes, a Bakewell tart and a cranberry jelly, some raspberry jam and dandelion sandwiches and a big plum cake with icing on the top. Hoorah! <laughs> cried Hare. Hoorah! cried Squirrel. To Lure Lee! sang Little Grey Rabbit dancing round the room. Hedgehog is bringing an extra can of milk said Mole. I thought you might be short. In fact, 
he continued, winking. Somebody whispered that you had a visitor today. An unwelcome one. It's still Fraz, said old Hedgehog, emptying the milk on the table. My wife says to me, Miss Squirrel had a fine green bow on her tail at the skating. And I says to her, maybe she'll be having company when she gets home and want a drop more milk. Or I should say, seeing as it's Fraz, a bit more milk. Come along, Hedgehog, and join the party, they cried, and he sat down on the settle, keeping his prickles to himself. Squirrel did have company. You were quite right, laughed Hare. And she tied a bow on his tail, too. And that's the end of the story. <laughs> This is the story of the knot that Squirrel tied. One morning, Rat came to his house door and gazed up and down with a weary eye. Then he slowly hobbled out to the hazel spinney and made a crutch to help himself along. Mrs. Rat shut the door after him and sighed as she rocked the wicker cradle in which her baby lay. It's never been the same since he stole the food from Grey Rabbit's house, and that impudent squirrel tied a knot in his tail. No one can untie it. Poor rat. He has indeed suffered for his misdoings. Rat crept along under the shadow of the wall. No longer could he scamper in a light-hearted way with his tail rippling behind him. Now... It always dragged in the heavy knot which Squirrel had tied to remind him of his wickedness. The knot was always in the way. It got entangled in briars, and no longer could he poach or thieve or hunt. Every day I get thinner and thinner. I never can get a really good dinner, Rat told his friends at the Cock and Bull Inn. He thought of this as he sidled along by the wall. At last he reached the farm buildings, and he climbed up the narrow stair into the hen house. He knew the speckledy hen had laid an egg, for he had heard her cackling triumphantly, boasting to all the world in her silly way of her cleverness. Rat crept through the little door and went to the nests. In one lay the big brown egg which had the golden yolk Rat loved so much. He tucked it under his body, but when he started downstairs, the knot in his tail caught in the doorway and he overbalanced. At that moment, the speckledy hen looked up from the farmyard below. She saw her precious egg clutched in the arms of the stumbling rat, and she set up such a screech that a farm man ran to the door. <coughs> She shrieked. Rat struggled to get free and dropped the egg. It rolled down the stairway and split on the ground, and Rat rushed to safety, followed by clods of earth and sticks and stones. Thinner and thinner, moaned Rat as he buckled his belt more tightly and slouched round the corner. Edgehog's a kindly soul, said he to himself. I'll have a talk with him. At milking time. He waited all afternoon till Hedgehog came trotting across the field with his yoke across his shoulders and the couple of milk pails jingling, jangling on the chains. The rat watched Hedgehog milk a cow and turn away with the warm milk frothing in his little pails. He licked his lips hungrily and then stepped softly after. 
old hedgehog heard the thump of his tail and exclaimed, Is that you, rat? Keep away from my milk pails. Hedgehog, Mr. Hedgehog, Sir Hedgehog, said rat humbly. A word with you, sir. A word in your ear, sir. Hedgehog put down the pails and waited. I'm getting very thin, said the rat. I never get anything to eat nowadays. Yes, said Hedgehog. We've all been more comfortable lately. I'm thin as a laugh, Rat went on, wiping his eyes with a ragged handkerchief. I'm nearly a skellington. What do you want me to do, Rat? I'll give you a drink of milk if you like. The kindly Hedgehog held out a pail and Rat drank it all up with eager gulps. Hedgehog looked cross. No, you've been and done it, he grumbled. That was the milk for your own family and for Grey Rabbit and Hare and Squirrel. I shall have to go back to the cow shed and the cow will be much annoyed. Please, kind Hedgehog, whined Rat as the Hedgehog turned back to the cow house. Do give me some advice. Everyone knows how wise you are. First time I've been called wise, said Hedgehog. How can I get the knot undone, Hedgehog? asked Rat. Let me look at it, said the Hedgehog. Let me see what I can do. My fingers are all thumbs, but I'll use my prickles. Rat shivered. Oh, oh, he squealed as the Hedgehog pulled and tugged at the knot with his spikes. I can't undo it, Rat. Clever fingers fastened it. Who was it, Rat? It was Squirrel, said Rat. Well, you better ask Squirrel to unfasten it, said Hedgehog. It's no use, said the Rat. If I go near the little house at the end of the wood, they'll hear me coming and they'll bolt the doors. Hedgehog pondered. Go and ask Mole's advice, said he. It was a weary road to Mole's house, with never a vestige of food to be seen in the fields. There were buttercups, but no butter, blackberry flowers, but no blackberries. How I wish I'd never gone to Grey Rabbit's larder, said the rat as he tramped up the field and crawled under the gate. There was Mole's house, with Mole digging up pig nuts in his garden. Good afternoon, Rat, said he. May I ask what brings you here? Please, Mole, can you untie the knot in my tail? asked the Rat in a tiny, sad little voice. Hedgehog sent me to you. Without a word, Mole trotted indoors and returned with a bowl of soup and a slice of bread. Eat this, said he. Then I will look at the knot. Rat thanked him and gobbled up the food. Then Mole seized the knot with his long pink fingers and struggled and tugged. But still the knot wouldn't come undone. It squirrels trying, said he. But I don't think even her clever fingers could undo this knot. The only one who can help you is Wise Owl. No, I don't go to him, said Rat shortly. I'm scared of him. A thin rat would be nothing to a hungry owl. Nothing venture, nothing win, replied Mole. Take him a present, Rat. Something special. I haven't got a present, said Rat to himself. I'm so poor, I have nothing. He put his hand in his pocket and brought out the ragged handkerchief and a bone. He looked at the bone for a few minutes and then laughed softly. I haven't even a knife, but my teeth are sharp, as sharp as a razor. They'll do the job. He sat down on a log and gnawed at the bone. He bit off a piece here and a slip off there and a snippet from one end 
and a whiff from the other, working away, polishing, and rubbing as he went. He was so much interested in his work that night came before he'd finished, and he took home his carving. It was a white little ship, with rigging and sails and tiny portholes. There was a figurehead at the prow, a seagull with outstretched wings. The next day, Rat set off with his finished ship in his pocket and a clean handkerchief. On his way to Wise Owl's Wood, he had to pass Little Grey Rabbit's cottage. Delicious smells came from the window, and Rat crept up to see what was being cooked. Little Grey Rabbit and Squirrel were making tartlets. Grey Rabbit rolled out the pastry with her little rolling pin, and Squirrel lined the patty pans ready for the raspberry jam. Grey Rabbit! Grey Rabbit! called Hare, running up the garden path and bursting into the kitchen. Rat hid under the juniper bush in the shadow, and Hare passed him without noticing. Grey Rabbit and Squirrel, said he, haymaking has begun, Daisy Field is cut, can we all go and play in the hayfield? The grass will be hay by tomorrow with this sunshine. Oh, let's, cried Grey Rabbit, and she waved her rolling pin excitedly. We'll go when the men have gone home tomorrow evening. Little Grey Rabbit put her tartlets in the oven, then they all went out in the garden and sat among the flowers, sipping lemonade and fanning themselves with the leaves of the sycamore tree. Rat crept up to the back door and looked into the cosy kitchen. Ah! he sighed and dragged his unwilling tail over the doorway. I'm safe for a few minutes, said he. He crouched down by the fire and sniffed the savoury smells of raspberry tartlets which came from the oven. He opened the oven door and poked his nose in the hot jam. Ow! He squeaked in a muffled voice. Too hot! Through the open window, he heard the three friends make plans for the picnic. There's my chance, said Rat. I'll come along tomorrow and see what I can find. Now... I'll go and have a word with Wise Owl. Rat waved his handkerchief and the owl made a truce. What? said he gruffly. brought you a present, wise owl. Rat spoke in a trembling voice. Ooh, mm, said wise owl, flying down and examining it. A nice bit of carving. Pity you don't do more work, Rat. Why not try to work instead of thieve? Please, wise owl, will you unknot my tail? asked Rat holding up his paws in a supplicating way. I am as thin as a leaf, and no one is clever enough to unknot me. Owl hummed to himself and turned the tiny bone ship over and over. Oh, I'm afraid you're still a thief, Rat. What about Speckledy Hen's egg? What about the farmer's corn? Where did that jam come from, which I see on your nose? The knot will stay tied until you turn over a new leaf rat. No one can unfasten it. Turn over a new leaf. Ooh. Owl shut his door and went back to his library. Rat hobbled painfully back through the wood, turning all the green leaves he could reach, but still his tail remained knotted. However, he felt happier, for he had made something, and Owl had looked pleased with it. The next day, as usual, he paid his visit to the farmyard to see what he could pilfer. He walked up to the hen roost 
and there was the speckledy hen's latest egg. Rat looked at it with longing eyes. Speckledy hen was a good-natured, silly creature. Who would leave her egg? There would be raspberry tartlets at Grey Rabbit's house. He turned away and started to go down the stair. Was it imagination? He felt a loosening in his tail. The knot thumped less noisily as he slid down. Rat went into the barn. There was a litter on the floor, and he seized a bunch of twigs and swept it away. Up and down the stones he went, sweeping softly, with scarcely a glance at the meal bag, until the floor was clean. Then he went up to the sack and gazed at its bulging sides. A pity to mess up the floor again. There would be raspberry tartlets waiting for him. He turned away. And another little hitch in his tail seemed to be loosened. He went to Hedgehog's house under the hedge. Can I do any little thing for you, Hedgehog? he asked. Old Hedgehog stared. Do you mean a little burglary? he asked. No. I'll help you carry your milk pails to the neighbours, said Rat. And drink the milk like you did yesterday, replied the Hedgehog indignantly. Try me, said Rat. So Hedgehog trusted him with the milk for the red squirrel who lived up in the pine tree. Rat took the milk to the red squirrel's door and knocked gently. He filled the jug at the foot of the tree and turned away. Rat walked through the fields. Both his heart and his tail felt lighter, and when he got back to Hedgehog's house, there was a mug of milk and a hunk of bread and cheese waiting for him on the doorstep. Fuzzy Pig peeped round the corner, all ready to run away. Rat put his hand in his pocket and brought out a dozen oak apples, which he gave to the astonished little Hedgehog for marbles. As evening came, there were sounds of gaiety in the hayfield. In the far corner, Squirrel and Little Grey Rabbit in blue sunbonnets were raking the hay, and Hare was piling it up into haycocks. Hedgehog and Fuzzy Pig came to help and tossed it with their prickles. Then Mole joined them with a little hayfork which he had made. Rat stood looking at the happy scene. An outsider who mustn't venture near. Then he noticed the feast spread out under the hedge not far from him. There it lay, in the shade of the foxgloves, with no one to guard it. There was a little white cloth, and on it a basket filled with the tempting raspberry tartlets. So it was of no use to go to the house, for the food was here. There were nut leaves laden with wild strawberries and raspberries and a jug full of cream. There was crab apple jelly and slow jam, little green lettuces and radishes like rosebuds, and a big plum cake. Rat's mouth watered. He stared so hard at the plum cake that he felt he could taste its delicious sugary crust. Then he turned away and walked home. A great pink cloud like a bunch of roses lay in the sky, and swifts cut across the blue air. Rat gazed up at the birds, so light and free. And at that moment, he felt light and free too. The last knot in his tail had come undone. He was a happy rat, loosened from his fetters, and he ran home to tell his wife whisking his tail like a whip round his head. I saw Rat staring at our feast, confided Grey Rabbit to the others as they sat round in a circle among the foxgloves. He didn't touch a thing, and he didn't know that I saw him. Rat helped to carry my milk today, 
And when I went to the barn, he'd sweat to clean, said old Hedgehog. Rat gave me some marbles, cried little Fuzzy Pig. He seems a changed animal, said little Grey Rabbit. I, uh, I wonder if Wise Owl gave him some good advice, mused the Mole. The next morning, Rat came to Little Grey Rabbit's house. He carried a pair of shears and a scythe instead of his club and gun. He was neat and tidy, and he walked with a quick, light step. Can I gather your firewood, Grey Rabbit? said he. Can I... Mow your lawn, or cut your hedge, or weed your garden. Why, the knot has gone from your tail, Rat, exclaimed Grey Rabbit. Who untied it? <laughs> no one, replied Rat modestly. It, it came undone by itself. I'm not a thief any more. I understand now what Wise Owl meant when he told me to... Turn over a new leaf. I shall work for my living, little grey rabbit. He took up his shears and cut the hedge, making peacocks and balls and ships. He mowed the lawn smooth as silk. At night he went home with his wages in his pocket, a respectable working animal. I'm going to carve something else, said he to his wife. You've never seen anything like what I'm going to make. He sat down at the table with his little white bone and began to carve. But that is a secret for another time. <laughs> and the weasels. Down in the dell lived a family of weasels. They had a dark little house built against a wall where nobody could see it. The door was hidden behind a curtain of foxglove leaves and the foxglove bells rang when anybody passed. The narrow windows were covered with green moss. Only in the middle of each there was a tiny crack where the weasels peeped out at passers-by. One day, Speckledy Hen was strolling that way with a basket of eggs on her arm. She was taking them to Little Grey Rabbit. It was a sunny day, and she sang a nice little clucking song as she went along the narrow path. This is what she sang. Cluckety cluckety cluck, my eggs will bring good luck. Little grey rabbit and squirrel and hare will each have one and one to spare. Cluckety cluckety cluck. She passed close to the weasel's house, but she did not know it was there. She did not see the sharp eyes watching her or hear the whispers behind the mossy windows. Three brown eggs and one to spare. How many's that? asked Bad William Weasel. Five eggs, said Bad Winky Weasel. Now it's four, said Bad Winnie Weasel, who had once been to school for a day and frightened the scholars out of their wits. Be quick and get them, whispered William. Out they slipped and away after the speckledy hen. They stole the eggs from under the white cloth and carried them home. The little hen walked on, knowing nothing. 
She stepped daintily on her long, sharp toes through the daisies up to Grey Rabbit's house. She tapped on the door with her beak and popped her head inside. Grey Rabbit! Grey Rabbit! she called. Are you at home? Downstairs scuttered Grey Rabbit with her dustpan and brush in her paws. Oh, my dear speckledy hen, how glad I am to see you, she cried. My dear Grey Rabbit, this is a pleasure, said the speckledy hen, and she fanned herself with her bonnet. My, it's hot walking all this way. Take a seat, dear speckledy, said Grey Rabbit, drawing forward the rocking chair and dusting it with her apron. Oh, thank you, dear Grey Rabbit, said the speckledy hen, and she fluttered the dust from her feathers, folded her wings neatly, and sat down. Hare came bounding in, followed by the breathless squirrel. Hello, speckledy hen, cried Hare. Welcome, said squirrel, shaking the hen's wing. Have you brought something in that basket? asked Hare. A present or something? Oh, Hare, hush, whispered Grey Rabbit. Speckledy Hen smiled. What do you like eggs, Hare? she asked. I do. We all do, replied Hare, licking his lips. Fried, boiled, baked and sprottled, said Squirrel. New, old, poached or stolen? said Hare. Well, look in my basket. Lift the cover carefully, or they may bite you, said the speckledy hen. Hare twitched the snowy cloth from the basket. Oh, it's empty, he cried. The speckledy hen flew out of the chair and stared into the basket. I put in quite a lot of eggs said she. One for her, and one for Squirrel, and two for Grey Rabbit. Two for her, and one for Squirrel, and one for Grey Rabbit, said Hare dolefully. Four eggs all gone, cried Grey Rabbit. Did you leave the basket anywhere? asked Squirrel. What? No, it never left my arm. The speckledy hen shook her little head. A master thief, said Hare. A magical trick, said Squirrel. A riddle of riddles, said Grey Rabbit. They gave the speckledy hen a glass of wine and a cake, and they talked of eggs and eggs. Then Grey Rabbit filled the basket with lettuces and herbs. I'll go home another way said the speckledy hen. Another day, Mouldy Warp was walking down the lane. He carried his little axe over his shoulder. I'll cut a nice pithy branch from an elder tree and make a whistle pipe, said he to himself. Then I'll play a tune outside Grey Rabbit's window and give her a surprise. He went slowly past the weasel's house, and he looked up at the fine foxglove growing there. He saw nothing of the fierce eyes watching his movements. Oh, here's a big foxglove. I could cut it down if I wanted, he thought, and he leaned his axe against the foxglove stem. The foxglove bells tinkled, and the weasels stared down at him. He did not hear their whispers, nor see the skinny paw that snatched the axe away. He fumbled in his pocket for his pipe, he struck a light with his tinderbox, and puffed at the lavender backy. Somebody snatched the pipe from his lips, and before he could turn round, another weasel dragged his waistcoat over his head. Help! Help! Reverend thieves! shouted Mole, muffled by a little hard fist. The waistcoat came off, and Mole was left staring about. Oh, was it the wind? he cried. I heard nobody. I saw nobody. 
But something took my waistcoat. Who was it? He trotted quickly along the tiny green path to Grey Rabbit's house and told his story. Poor old mouldy warp, said Grey Rabbit, wrapping a rug round him. I'll make you a new waistcoat tonight. Poor old mouldy warp, said Hare. I'll give you my axe. I don't want to bother cutting wood any more. Poor old mouldy warp, said Squirrel. I'll make you a briar pipe and get some more backy for you. Mole sat in the rocking chair, shaking his head. It's very kind of you, my friends, and I thank you very much. But what I want to know is, how did my pipe and axe and waistcoat go? They vanished. They flew. Wings, said Hare. They've got wings. Speckledy Hen lost her eggs, said Grey Rabbit. There's some mystery in the little lane, said Hare. Let's call it Shady Lane. were enjoying themselves in their secret house. They crept out at night and got plenty to eat. During the day they robbed anyone who went by. Cock Robin, the postman, lost his mail bag. Water Rat lost his frill one afternoon. And Fuzzy Pig lost his lesson bag with all his homework. I don't really mind he confessed. I couldn't do the sums. I was just wishing those sums were at Jericho, and they weren't. Only Wise Owl and Grey Rabbit had not been troubled. Squirrel had the green bow nipped off her tail. Hare had his watch stolen and his handkerchief taken from his pocket. I ran like the wind or my coat would have gone from my back he cried when he got home. You mustn't go down Shady Lane, Grey Rabbit. It isn't safe. Grey Rabbit didn't want to go down Shady Lane. She thought she might lose her little blue apron. Then, one day, she was late coming home from market, and she took the short cut past the tall foxglove where the weasel's house was hidden. The weasels were watching her from their mossy windows. They were so excited to see Little Grey Rabbit they could hardly keep from cheering. They crept down to the door and looked outside. The little rabbit was singing as she came past. Then the foxglove bells began to ring and the weasels went on tiptoes in the shadows. Suddenly William Weasel snatched her basket and Winky and Winnie leapt from the leaves and picked her up. They swept her quickly through the door into the house. Oh, dear me. Oh, dear, cried Grey Rabbit. Please, let me go home. No, Grey Rabbit. We've been waiting for you, said the weasels, chuckling. We are not going to eat you. Oh, no, that would be a waste. We want somebody to bake and wash and clean while we go hunting. We want somebody to make our beds and darn our socks. Please, I have to go home to look after Squirrel and Hare, said Grey Rabbit. They can't do without me. They must. Here you are and here you will stay. Nobody will find you. You shall be our slave. So Grey Rabbit knew she must make the best of it. She cooked for the fierce weasels and cleaned their ugly little house. She polished the rusty tins and saucepans. She scrubbed the floor and washed the clothes. She worked all day without stopping, or they nipped her with their sharp teeth. At night, she slept in one of the little bedrooms, and in the next room was Winnie, the worst of them all.
Grey Rabbit's house, there was great trouble. Hare and Squirrel searched everywhere for their friend. Hare even ventured to Wise Owl's tree and rang the bell. Ooh, grey Rabbit gone, hooted Wise Owl. Very careless of you, Hare. Go home and find her. Poor Hare turned sadly away, and Wise Owl called him back. I'll help you, Hare. You look by day, and I'll hunt by night. Ooh. Hare ventured down Shady Lane, looking for Grey Rabbit's basket. He passed the weasel's house, but there was no sound or sight of anyone. Then out darted a weasel and grabbed Hare's clean pocket handkerchief, which he had taken to wave as a truce to Wise Owl. Hare scurried home in fright. Grey Rabbit saw the handkerchief with the letter H in the corner. Poor old Hare, she thought sadly, his Sunday hanky. That night, the weasels fetched her from her work in the scullery to the kitchen where they sat round the fire. Sing to us, Grey Rabbit, they commanded. We like music and we can't sing. Sing a song. I'll sing. If you promise not to hurt my friends or take their things, said Grey Rabbit, I won't sing a note unless you promise. She stood there like a little grey rock, and she wouldn't open her mouth, although they pinched her and pulled her tail. We promise, we promise, said the weasels at last. So Grey Rabbit straightened out her apron and raised her brave little head and sang to the weasels. First she sang, a frog he would a wooing go. And the weasels clapped and stamped their tiny feet and sipped the weasel wine and asked for more. Wise Owl was flying slowly down Shady Lane, listening to the rustle of leaves and flowers. Mm -hmm. What's that noise? he asked himself. It's coming from behind that tall foxglove. What can it be? Ooh. He flew down on his silent wings and waited there. He could hear the stamping and squeaking. Then he heard a well-known little voice singing Rule Britannia. He flew close and put one eye to the mossy window. He could just see inside the room. A candle was burning on the table. The weasels sat round, and Grey Rabbit was singing. Tweet, tweet, called Wise Owl loudly, and the candle was blown out, and the weasels were quiet. Shh! Go to bed, Grey Rabbit! There's that pesky owl flying over! Go to bed! said they. He'll eat you up if he sees you! So Grey Rabbit went up the crooked stair to her room, she pressed her face to the window crack, and Wise Owl saw her. Oh, Wise Owl, save me, she whispered, and she opened the window. Wise Owl broke away the moss and balanced on the sill. Grey Rabbit climbed on his back and clung to his feathers. Away he flew, but the tip of his wing caught the foxglove and set all the bells ringing. What's that? What's that? The bell's ringing an alarm! cried the weasels. They were too late. Wise Owl and Grey Rabbit had gone. Wise Owl dropped her gently on her own doorstep, and then he flew off. called Grey Rabbit, banging at the door. Hare and Squirrel came tumbling downstairs, half asleep. Oh, Grey Rabbit, where have you been? How did you get home? They asked as they brought her in and locked the door again. Wise Owl saved me, said Grey Rabbit. He did. 
He did. I flew on his back. On the owl's back? On the owl's back? Echoed Hare and Squirrel, astonished. Now Wise Owl had flown away to the weasel's house. He shook the door and shouted to them. Oh, all you weasel tribe, said he, pack up your belongings and depart at once. If you are here tomorrow, I shall make a meal of you. Take warning and you must leave behind everything you stole. That was all, but the weasels knew he meant it. They packed their little handcart with their pots and pans and chairs and bedding, and put the table on the top. Away they went, grumbling and muttering as cross as three cross sticks. The next day, Grey Rabbit set off with a basket of presents for Wise Owl. She rang the little bell at his doorway and waved her handkerchief. Ooh, ooh, who's that? Waking me up? yawned Wise Owl. Then he saw the little rabbit. Oh, it's you, Grey Rabbit. I'm glad your mum the was for your flight. It was lovely, Wise Owl, cried Grey Rabbit. I've brought you an apple pasty and a treacle tart and a bottle of primrose wine. Down to the ground flew Wise Owl and fluttered his wide wings. Just sing that song again, Grey Rabbit, the song you were singing to the weasels, said he. So Grey Rabbit sang. Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. Britons never, never, never shall be slaves. Ooh, she's an old friend of mine, that Britannia, said Wise Owl. I'll take you to see her some day, Grey Rabbit. She says nobody shall be a slave, Grey Rabbit. Now here is the story of Little Grey Rabbit's Christmas. It had been snowing for hours. Hare stood in the garden of the little house at the end of the wood, watching the snowflakes which came softly tumbling down from the grey sky, dropping like white feathers. His paws were outstretched, his head uplifted, his mouth wide open. His fur was sprinkled with snow so that he looked like a white hare from the icy north. Every now and then he caught an extra large flake and ate it with relish. Whatever are you doing, hare? cried Squirrel, who sat close to the fire. Come in, you'll catch cold. I am catching cold and eating it too, replied hare happily. Hare, how long do you think she will be? Can you see her coming? called Squirrel again. Hare slowly turned his head to the door. Did you speak, Squirrel? Or did you merely squeak? he asked. I speaked, said Squirrel indignantly. I mean to say, I spoke. Where is Little Grey Rabbit? She's at the market. Buying Christmas fare for all of us, replied Hare. I think she's choosing something special for me. It was growing dark when Squirrel and Hare heard the sound of merry voices and the ringing of bells in the lane. They ran to the door 
and what should they see but a fine scarlet sledge drawn by two young rabbits and little grey rabbit herself sitting cosily on the top. The sledge stopped at the door and grey rabbit sprang off and curtsied to her astonished friends. That's a fine contraption, exclaimed Hare admiringly. Where did you hire it? Oh, Grey Rabbit, what a lovely cart, cried Squirrel. She rubbed her paws over the smooth sides and peered at the holly leaves which adorned the sledge. Grey Rabbit! Our names are on it, shouted Hare. He pointed excitedly to the words Squirrel, Hare and Little Grey Rabbit, written in flowing rabbity letters round the sides. It's ours! It says so! Yes, it is our very own, answered Grey Rabbit. I ordered it from Joe Carpenter, but I had to wait for the paint to dry. These kind rabbits insisted on bringing me home on it. We will go out sledging tomorrow. Grey Rabbit untied her parcels and put away her groceries. Some little packets she hid. But Squirrel and Hare were too busy wiping the snow from the new sledge and examining the runners to pay any heed to Grey Rabbit and her secrets. <laughs> After breakfast the next day they set off. Squirrel and Little Grey Rabbit sat on the sledge and Hare pulled them over the field. They came to their favourite hill. Hare mounted behind them and stretched out his long legs to guide them. One to be ready, two to be steady, three to be off, he cried. And away they went down the steep slope, shouting with excitement, clinging to one another as the sledge gathered speed. It flew like a streak of lightning. Woo-hoo! cried Hare breathlessly. What a speed! What an express train! Whoops! Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, Mare! But the sledge wouldn't stop. At last it struck a molehill, and over they all toppled, little furry bodies tumbling head over heels. Sixty miles an hour! cried Hare sitting up and rubbing his elbow. Little Fuzzy Peg, carrying a slice of bread and jam for his lunch, came to watch the fun. He stared at the three, dragging their pretty sledge up the slope, and he longed to join them. I want to toboggan, said he softly, but nobody heard. Squirrel, Hare and Little Grey Rabbit settled themselves on the seat and started on another journey. Look at me, Toboggan! Watch me! cried Fuzzy Peg. He made himself into a ball and rolled down the hill faster and faster. When he got to the bottom, there was no Fuzzy Peg to be seen, only an enormous snowball. What a big snowball! cried Squirrel. What a beauty! exclaimed Grey Rabbit admiringly. squeaked a tiny muffled voice. Get me out! What's that? cried Squirrel, startled. I thought I heard a sound. Help! Help! piped Little Fuzzy Pig faintly. That's a talking snowball, explained Hare, leaning over the great ball. Isn't it interesting? Has anyone ever seen a snowball that could talk? Isn't it a curiosity? I'll take it home and keep it in the garden. He dragged the large ball onto the sledge and pulled the load uphill. When they reached the top, Hare rolled the ball to the ground and gave it a kick. Ooh! he cried, limping. There's a fawn inside. Help! Help! shrieked the tiny faraway voice indignantly. Let me out! That is like Fuzzy Peg's voice, said Grey Rabbit with a puzzled frown, and she bent over and loosened the caked snow. Out came the little hedgehog, eating his bread and jam. However did you get inside a snowball? 
asked Hare, who was most disappointed at this discovery. I didn't get inside. It got round me, replied Fuzzy Pig calmly. Can I go on your sledge now? Hare took the little hedgehog for a ride. But when Fuzzy Pig flung his arms round Hare's waist, he sprang shrieking away. That's enough, said he severely. My motto is never go hedging with a sledgehog. Oh, I mean to say, he corrected himself hastily, never go sledging with a hedgehog. You must ride alone, young fellow. Squirrel, Hare and Little Grey Rabbit took their sledge to Mouldy Warp's house. The holly trees were ablaze with red berries, and Squirrel ran up the trees and gathered some sprays. Mole came out to show them the lovely pale branches of mistletoe growing on an oak tree. Then he said goodbye, for it was Christmas Eve, and everyone had work to do in preparation for the day. Hare shut the sledge in the woodshed and carried the holly and mistletoe indoors. He began to decorate the room, helped by the nimble squirrel. Little Grey Rabbit stood at the table, her cooking apron wrapped round her, making mince pies. I think I shall take out the sledge and toboggan down the hill by moonlight, said Hare, looking up at the round moon which made the land bright as day. I might see something of Santa Claus and his reindeer. He wrapped a muffler round his neck, seized the cord of the sledge and ran across the fields to the hill. Then down he swooped, flying like a bird. Everything looked different in the white moonbeams. The ice crackled, the stars sparkled blue and green and winked at the excited hare. Again and again he rushed down the hill, his eyes on the lovely moon. Suddenly he noticed a dark shadow running alongside. It was his own moon shadow. But hare saw the long ears and the round head of a strange monster. Oh dear, oh dear, who is that dusky fellow racing by my side? he cried. He took to his heels, leaving the sledge lying in the field, and away he went as fast as he could, running from his own long shadow. Did you come home without the sledge? asked Squirrel, indignantly. Hare, you are a coward. I don't believe there was anybody at all. You ran away from your shadow. You've lost our lovely sledge. Better than losing my lovely life, retorted Hare. He felt rather miserable. He wished he had stopped to look at the dusky creature which chased him. Shadows were good companions, and he had run away and deserted the scarlet sledge. Well, I, I suppose we'd better go to bed, he muttered. I don't suppose there'll be any presents tomorrow. I don't think Santa Claus will find this house with so much snow about. He went upstairs gloomily, but he hung up his furry stocking all the same, and so did Squirrel. When all was quiet, Grey Rabbit crept out of her room and peeped at Hare lying fast asleep. Then she looked at Squirrel, whose tail was curled over her eyes. She ran back to her own room. Under the bed was a store of parcels. She opened them and filled the stockings and placed little gifts at the foot of each bed. Won't they be surprised? She chuckled to herself.
Christmas morning, Grey Rabbit was so sleepy, she didn't wake till Hare burst into her room. Grey Rabbit! Merry Christmas, Grey Rabbit! Merry Christmas, Hare, murmured the little rabbit. Grey Rabbit! He's been! Wake up! He's been in the night! Who? cried Grey Rabbit, rubbing her eyes and sitting up in a fright. Who? Has Rat been? Santa Claus! cried Hare, capering up and down by her bed. Be quick and come downstairs and see the surprises. Grey Rabbit dressed hurriedly, but there was a twinkle in her eyes as she entered the room. Look what he's brought me, cried Squirrel, holding out a pair of fur mittens and bedroom slippers made from sheep's wool. And he gave me a spotted handkerchief and a musical box, cried Hare excitedly. And he turned the handle of the little round box, from which came a jolly tune which set their feet dancing. Robin the postman flew to the door with some Christmas cards and a letter. Squirrel took the little letter and read the scrawl. Come tonight, love from Mouldy Wall. It's a party, cried Hare. Quick, Grey Rabbit, write and say we'll all be there and we hope there will be plenty to eat. Grey Rabbit sat at her desk and wrote in careful letters on an ivy leaf. Thank you, dear Mouldy Warp. Then away flew the robin with the leaf in his bag. All day they enjoyed themselves, playing musical chairs to the tunes in Hare's musical box, pulling tiny crackers, crunching the lollipops. They all trooped to the hill to look for the sledge, but it wasn't there. Snow had covered all traces of footprints. The first star appeared in the sky and the three animals wrapped themselves up in warm clothes and started for Mole's house. What a pity you lost our beautiful sledge. We could have ridden on it tonight, said Squirrel to Hare. Hare hung his head. He wished she wouldn't talk about it so much. the three got near Mole's house, they saw something glittering. A lighted tree grew by the path like a burning beacon. Oh dear, something's on fire, cried Hare. Let's put it out. Climb up and blow it out, Squirrel. Hush, whispered Grey Rabbit. It's a magical tree. A tree from fairyland growing in our wood. On every branch of the little fir tree, candles wavered their tongues of flame. Little red and gold fruits hung from the tips of the boughs. Icicles and hailstones shone like diamonds among the branches. Brightly coloured feathers and shells were fastened to the bark, and chains of frozen water drops swung to and fro, reflecting the candlelight. Through the tip-top of this wonderful tree gleamed the Christmas star. What do you think of my tree? asked Mouldy Warp, stepping out of the shadows. <gasps> beautiful, 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 they murmured. It's not a rose tree. Not a holly tree, nor an apple tree. Is it a fairy tree, Mole? asked Grey Rabbit. It's a Christmas tree, replied Mole in his soft, mysterious voice. It's for all the birds and beasts of the woods and fields. They will see it from afar 
and come here. Now sit quietly and watch. Across the snowy fields padded little dark creatures, all filled with curiosity to see the glowing lights in the tree. Some were thin and some were lame and many were poor, for it had been a hard winter. The carolers and market people were there and Water Rat in his brown velvet coat, even Wise Owl flew down to see what was the matter. And Rat, with his wife and baby, stood on the edge of the crowd. Help yourselves, cried Mole, waving his short arms. It is Christmas. Eat and drink and warm yourselves. Take away as much as you want for your storerooms. From behind a tree, Rat sidled towards Grey Rabbit and touched his hat. Miss Grey Rabbit, said he, a word in your ear. I found a scarlet sledge in the field last night, and my missus read your family name on it. So I took the liberty of bringing it here for you. Oh, thank you, kind Rat cried Grey Rabbit, clapping her paws with delight. The sledge is found. Come, Hare, Squirrel, Mouldywarp, Wise Owl, come and see our sledge, called Grey Rabbit, and everyone crowded round to admire it. The little scarlet sledge was clean and bright, for Rat had rubbed the snow away. On the top was a fleecy shawl covering something, and Grey Rabbit drew from under it three objects, which she held up wonderingly. The first was a walking stick made of peeled holly wood, polished like ivory, and the handle was carved in the shape of hair. That must be for me, from good Santa Claus, said Hare, seizing it and swinging it about his head. The second was a little wooden spoon with a hazelnut carved in the handle. That is certainly mine, said Squirrel, and she put it in her pocket. The third was a wee bone box hanging on a string of berries, and when Grey Rabbit unfastened the lid, there was a little white thimble inside which exactly fitted her. Only one person could make such delicate carvings, said Grey Rabbit. And that is Rat, said Squirrel. Three cheers for Rat, cried Fuzzy Peg, and they all cheered. <laughs> Hooray! Squirrel and Grey Rabbit climbed on the sledge, and Hare drew them over the snow. Good night. A happy Christmas, they called as they left their friends behind. Toot, toot, Merry Christmas, toot. Hooted Wise Owl as he sailed overhead and flew across the wood to his own home in the beech tree. Hey ho, I'm sleepy too, murmured Squirrel. But it has been lovely. Thank you, Grey Rabbit, and Moldy Warp, and Rat, and everyone for a happy day. She curled down under the fleecy shawl by Grey Rabbit's side and clutched her wooden spoon. Grey Rabbit sat wide awake on the swaying sledge. Her thimble was on her finger. Her eyes shone with happiness. Peace on earth and mercy bright. Her heart sang. And Hare ran swiftly over the frozen snow, drawing the scarlet-coloured sledge towards the little house at the end of the wood.